two Lego trains. Spot the difference? Yeah, this one's blue and this one's not. But this one's also got silver wheels and that's really important. The electric motor in this train gets its power from the metal tracks. We don't turn the train on and off, we turn the track power on and off with this big retro controller. Now this train is a power functions train. This is how all new LEGO trains work. You've got a big battery box here that powers the motor, and here is an infrared receiver that picks up signals from this remote control. All the power's in the train, so we can use plastic track instead of metal. Inside the plastic of the remote control is an infrared LED, just like this one. You can buy these at any hobby electronics store. This one's a T-Cell 6400. We can connect this to our Arduino and control the train automatically. How cool is that? These LEDs are also cool because, with a tiny bit of work, they fit into a LEGO Technic brick. Using these LEDs and an Arduino control board, we can write programs on a computer to control the trains automatically. It doesn't matter whether you use a big Arduino Mega, the little Nano, or even this tiny DigiSpark. For a single train, all we need is one PWM pin like these ones here. So how do we connect the LED to the Arduino? LEDs connect to the ground and one of the digital pins of your Arduino. Each LED has a long leg and a short leg. The short leg goes to ground and the long one goes to the Arduino output pin. But wait! We always add a resistor to the short leg when connecting LEDs to the Arduino. What size resistor? Here's Anna check. Put the LED type and PDF into Google. Find the data sheet for your LED. Find the typical forward current and forward voltage values. Visit this resistor calculator website, and the link is in the description. Enter 5 for the source voltage, because our Arduino is 5 volts. Enter the forward voltage, 1.35. Enter the forward current, 100. And enter the number of LEDs, 1. And here it shows we need a 39 ohm resistor. So we choose one of those. Connect it to the LED. Add some wire and some pins and plug it into the Arduino. If your track's really big, you can add more than one LED so that your Arduino can always send a signal to your train. To do that, just change the number of LEDs to two, and you can see we link the LEDs together and add a smaller resistor. I've used some more wires to keep these LEDs apart, and I've added two long poles to help lift them above the track. Then I can clip them to my loading station like this. So how do we make this work? If you've never used an Arduino before, download the Arduino IDE to your computer. Install it. and plug in the Arduino to a USB slot. Now we need the LEDs to send the same signals to the train as the LEGO remote control. To do that, we need to download a library to our Arduino software. Go to this link, which is also in the description below, and download the zip file. Open the file, and extract the folder inside to your Arduino library folder, which is where you installed the Arduino IDE on your computer. Now fire up the Arduino IDE, and let's write some basic code. This really simple sketch is just going to move our train backwards and forwards for a certain number of seconds. To start, 
we need to declare that we're using our new Power Functions library, so that goes here. Then we state which pin on the Arduino is controlling our LEDs. We're plugged into pin 13 here. There's no other setup, so that part of the code is really simple. Here in the void loop section, we state what we want the train to do. Because this function is called loop, it'll do the same thing over and over again. So let's make it simple. Here's the action, Lego single output, and then we set the parameters, put a zero, and then PWN forward four means power the train forward at speed four, because these trains have seven speeds from one to seven. We're using the blue side of our infrared receiver and channel one. You can check which channel your train uses with your Lego remote. This can be CH1, 2, 3, or 4. I think it takes about 10 seconds to do a loop of our track, so we put delay 10,000. On the next line, we put the same command, but instead of forward 4, we use FLT, which makes the train stop. And we'll stop just for a second. Then we'll do the whole thing backwards. So copy all these lines, paste them again, and instead of FWD4, we'll have REV4, which means reverse speed 4. And that's it. Now make sure your Arduino is selected properly in the IDE, then click Compile, and the whole program is sent to your Arduino. Unplug it from your computer, and set the Arduino up near your LEGO trains. Plug in the LEDs to the correct PWM pin and ground, and we're almost ready to go. Now because Power Functions trains were designed to have the remote used from above, you might want to remove a few bricks to make sure your infrared LEDs have a clear signal to your train. On this loco, I'll remove the front cover, the top shield, and a few of these border plates so that the infrared receiver is fully exposed. As soon as you give the Arduino power, it'll fire up the LEDs and start controlling your train. So let's turn on the train and then plug the Arduino into a power supply. I'm using this USB battery pack. And off we go. So as you can see, it goes around the track one way, pauses, and then reverses back the other way. And it will keep doing that over and over again because we use the loop. If you want to write more sophisticated programs for your trains, including motorized points or running two trains at once, then just click here and check out the other videos in my channel. Thanks very much for watching, and if you liked it, I'd love you to click thumbs up to show that you liked the video. Thanks for watching.